What up, y'all? Welcome to the Road to Bottom NASCAR podcast. I'm your host, Zach Moore. We're back. First episode of the Mary Off Season series. Lots of off season news and a lot of off season news. Uh, this past two weeks, I didn't expect this um, this news to just keep coming out so fast. Um, lots of stuff to cover. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do apologize if you guys probably didn't really know if I was going to come out with episodes in the off season. I didn't really make that clear in my last episode, episode um, five, letting you know if I was going to make off season content. Uh, off season content, excuse me. Um, but I am. And we're here. It'll, it'll be very random. It will not be, you know, it'll just come down to how much news comes out at a certain time if I make an episode or not. So, um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys can enjoy this episode. Uh, let's get into it. I do want to start off uh, Ken Squire, um, former NASCAR broadcaster, analyst, uh, legend, Hall of Famer in the sport, uh, passed away at the age of 88. Um, you know, he was retired before I was ever born. Uh, but he's a legend in this sport, uh, successful, helped build the sport into what it is today when it comes to broadcasting. Um, yeah, I never, you know, never got to watch, never, you know, got to experience him broadcasting a race besides maybe a couple of times, uh, during some of the Darlington throwback races, they had certain segments where they would, you know, for like a throwback, they would, they would have him come in and, uh, commentate the, you know, stage two or stage one. So that was really cool to experience that. Um, but yeah, sad, sad news for the NASCAR community. Uh, yeah, my thoughts and prayers go out to his family uh, at this time. And yeah, uh, let's move into our first topic. Corey Heim uh, was issued a penalty of $12,500 bills and 25 driver points for intentionally wrecking Carson Hussler. Um in the last championship race, you know, he got wrecked by Carson, and then he chose to reca- re- retaliate towards Carson, uh, kind of trying to, you know, admit he was, during his post-race interview, he tried to downplay that he didn't do that. Uh, I knew what I was doing in the car. You can't say I was, because only I know type stuff. Uh, but Nassar didn't believe in it, so they, they laid down the, uh, apparently nothing nothing too extreme. You know, 25 driver points doesn't really do much. It might affect some of the, the point standings a little bit, but I think he was pretty high in points. He was top four. He's not going to lose much, and it was the end of the season. I don't think it really meant – doesn't really mean much for him. Um, he, he lost the championship. Um, but, yeah, a lot of people thought maybe Carson should have got a penalty too, but to me that was more of a racing incident less than, like, uh, him uh, intentionally uh, doing that. So, uh, yeah, this point for uh, – this important way for Corey Hyam to, you know, end the season off like that. And then uh, Chase Elliott. Had some off-season surgery on his shoulder. I guess this is unknown. We don't know exactly what the issue or how this, in, you know, injury. I don't know if it was a long-term. He might have had this injury going on way before the season. This could have been a, a part of maybe his accident he had uh, skiing that caused him to, to snap his fibula, tibia, whatever it was. Uh, but hopefully this, this is good for him. Get all those injuries, get all those things that could be distractions going into the 2024 season away. He'll be healed up um, for 2024. So it should be a good year. Good thing for Chase Alec fans. This is a big year for Chase Alec. It needs to, it's a year of redemption. Prove to the world that you're still that guy. Uh, you're still that dog. You know, uh, it's a big deal. NASCAR needs Chase Alec to be successful because he helped he built, build the sport fans. He has probably the biggest fan base in the sport. You know, he's the most popular driver for the past three, four, five years, ever since he's really gotten the series after, since the engineer has retired. Uh, so he's a big part of the sport. We need him to be successful. We need him to win. Um, now, I don't know about this year if he'll get the most popular driver because of how bad he's run. But that'll be interesting to see when they get to the award ceremonies. But uh, great for Chase. I think great to uh, not have many distractions going into the 2024 season. And then, uh, Richmond Raceway has a new logo, new rebrand um it's to help kind of promote their new river city the logo has like a little river with some stars in the back uh stuff like that it looks like it's, it's a blue and black logo so it could be a new look for the racetrack the walls could be painted differently cool uh there's a lot of hate that gets towards richmond i feel like because the track hasn't really produced well good racing it's, but also I, I feel like i would turn that more to how bad the the, the packages has been, it hasn't, the short track package has not been as great. And also because I think it has, because Richmond has two races, a lot of fans want that one 
win the races to go to a different track, a track that maybe uh, could put on a better show. And, you know, especially because the intermediate package runs so well, some fans would probably rather take a, one of those Richmond races away and give it to an intermediate track, you know, Chicagoland or Kentucky or, or like, maybe like Rockingham or a track that, uh, they, that, that, could, that could use it. Uh, but no, it'll be good. Good. It, it should bring in a little uh, excitement for the track. Two races. Hopefully they can build it up. Uh, hopefully this new, well, all the changes they're going to be doing to this short track package could hopefully help to produce better racing for that track and stuff. Uh, ben Mayshore uh, will be the crew chief for John Hunter Newcheck going into the 2024 season. John Hunter Newcheck going to Legacy Motor Club. Uh, ben Mayshore was the crew chief for John Hunter Newcheck this year in the Xfinity Series. He was the former crew chief of Kyle Busch, but when, when Kyle Busch had Joe Kunz racing. Um, so, big deal for uh, John Hunter Newcheck to get his former. Well, I guess his former or his current crew chief he had in the Xfinity series to come all over him, over to with him to the Legacy Motor Mo, Legacy Motor Club, jeez, um, to help him get you know keep that chemistry going. it will be good for him not to have to you know have a new face, a new crew chief to have to like work with. The chemistry will already be there uh, for him to you know continue to build on what they already built in the Xfinity series. So good stuff for uh, John and Check. And then. Um, Taylor and Tanner Gray are going to both be staying at Tricon Racing. They both signed for full time in the Truck Series. They're both brothers, both young, both have a, a lot of potential. Uh, Tanner Gray, um, Tanner Gray's Taylor Gray's stats from last year were six top tens, five top threes, uh, zero wins, zero poles, led two laps, average finish of 16.1 uh you know i didn't really follow much of the truck series as much you know i didn't go as in deep with what um you know people the, the top guys the the uh, you know the over performers or under performers uh, but to me his stats are good 16.1 he's young i know he was i think in the year before that he was in the x series not x series the uh arca series so um i think because tricon used to be uh david gillian racing but then they switched to Toyota because they used to be uh, Ford. So um, I think uh, this is it was a good year for him. But I think this is going to have an opportunity to improve and build on what he built last year. So good stuff for uh, Taylor Gray. And then his brother, Tanner Gray, um, also full-time for 2024. Continue to build on what last year was. His stats were six top tens and three top fives. It was the literally the exact same stats. But only thing he did better than his brother was have one pole and an average finish average finish of thirteen point four. So uh you know a lot a little more maybe a little more potential, a little a lot a little better uh, stats there, but both great for the brothers to the build on what they're hopefully to have a successful season next year, continue to build build their careers to hopefully improve to get to the next level. Uh great stuff for them. Always good when you can get, you know, sign up for another year you know this is a, this is that's her series i think all three series are tough they're all competitive you all have to be you all got to be good to, to to compete in those levels and be successful so great for those guys and then going in uh kyle kyle weatherman will be running full time for dgm racing uh he'll be driving the 91 xfinity car uh, I think last year was a decent year for him. I think he was a little part time, part time in '91. That was a full time car. Uh, his stats from uh, last year were uh, zero top fives, zero top tens, uh, twenty five starts. Um, so you know he's running, he's running for a much smaller team. Doesn't have as much of the same technology and equipment. The people aren't as good as what you know the big teams are. But always good when you can get a full-time ride for any team in the Cup Series. Not Cup Series. My bad. Xfinity Series. So good for him. It's going to make him feel good. Be able to go into another year. And another year to improve and hopefully build. And who knows uh, what could happen. A win at a Super Speedway. Uh, DGM, I see, is a team on the rise. They're young. They're improving. Uh, they're trying to build their, their racing program. So good for uh, Kyle Winterman. Good stuff. Then, uh... Brendan Poole. Brendan Poole announced he'll be going full-time with Series Racing with Alpha Prime Racing in 2024. 
sponsorship will be Finance Pro Plus, Maco Door Systems. That gives the organization two five full-time drivers signed in a Ryan Ellis, number 43, and Paul, no 44. So uh, it's it's going to be a big deal for uh, Alpha Prime Racing to get Brennan Poole. Brennan Poole is uh, with, I think, JT, JD Motorsports, a much more funded team. He's just kind of been bounced around from team to team. Nothing, not as, you know, he hasn't really performed as high level as maybe he wished. Um, you know, his stats last year were one top 10 and one top five, zero poles. Um, he had two laps. Average finish was 29. Point one. So, you know, he's run, he's not run as great, but he's running for a lot smaller team, low funded team. Uh, so he hasn't really gotten the resources, but I, Alpha Prime is definitely an improvement when it comes to equipment, people, technology for him. So I think this is going to, this is going to be probably his best opportunity he's gotten in any ride, in any series. So a great thing for him. And then, uh, Jake Garcia, uh, uh, Thorspor announced that. Jake Garcia is going to be the truck driver uh, for the number one truck for the full full season schedule. Um, truck number, I guess, actually, my bad. The truck number was not announced. But it looks like he's going to be replacing uh, Haley Deegan. Thor Sport will also be continuing to go to Ford. Look, continue to be a Ford team. So, uh, good thing for them. Going to be a big deal. It'll be interesting to see what how Jake Garcia performs compared to what Haley Deegan uh, performs too, uh, compared to what Haley Deegan did last year. Um, yeah, I, I would feel like last year was a letdown for Haley Deegan, what fans expected. So we'll see what Jake Garcia uh, can do um, next year. His stats uh, this past year were nine top tens and three top fives. So decent stats. Uh, I don't know exactly know what team he raced for, but good. good I, I'm not sure you're surprised. I don't know much about Jake, but. Uh, very impressive stats for a guy who ran for a much smaller team. Uh, average finish was 13.8. So, all good stuff for uh, Jake Garcia. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what he can do next year. And then, uh, Live Fast Motorsports. So, they, and during the season, they sold their charter for $40 flipping million dollars to Spire. Uh, uh, listening to what um, interviews, uh, BJ McLeod, Said the team is planning to run a part time schedule for a part time cup schedule. Um, so they plan to run, you know, open car. So it's a non chartered team, meaning they have to qualify themselves into the races. They plan mostly uh, super speedways and road courses. And then they'll run full time. They also, they also have an Xfinity Series team. Um, they'll, they'll run full time in. Full time and good for uh, BJ McLeod, good for their team to still be able to stay in the Cup Series. I think that $40 million they can use to help improve, get better people, and that should definitely help their Xfinity Series program with the extra, you know, extra cash they got, uh, you know, a, a ton of cash they got from that $40 million charter that they can be able to, you know, imply to their Xfinity and hopefully, and also Cup program and help build those and continue to improve on those um, teams. And then uh, Spire Motorsports. Announced so Zane Smith, who is a signed, signed to Trackhouse, but you know Trackhouse is leasing him to Spire. Uh, Zane Smith's car number will be 71. And then I also want to talk about their truck team, their truck lineup. As Spire bought Kyle Busch's Kyle Busch Motorsports, they still plan to keep Nick Nick, Nick Sanchez, uh, Chase Purdy, and then a third truck, a third truck which will have multiple drivers. As also Kyle Busch. Has said that he hopes to run five truck races next year too, so it's good that they're going to be able to keep mostly you know Chase Purdy, uh, who was you know team for Kyle Busch. It's good that they're going to Chase is going to be able to keep that ride. I assume he was signed to a multi-year deal already, so I don't think that really affected. He was just going to be a different team, and also good for uh, Nick Sanchez. Uh, I think Nick Sanchez was uh, for GMS Racing, or he was with a different team. It was kind of like affiliation, so it looks like he might be, Nick Sanchez might be full time with Spire. It'll, it'll be a Spire truck instead of like a uh, half and half team truck. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting with Spire. Let's see how they do. We'll see, you know, they also, Spire just moved into KBM's uh, shop, so that now it looks like their cup program, all their trucks and cup cars will all be at the old KBM building. 
because that was a very nice building. So it'll be interesting to see. This is going to be a big year for Splatter. You're going to have three cup teams with Carson Hosevar, uh, Corey LaJoy, and uh, Zane Smith. And you're going to have, it looks like, three, two full-time trucks with Nick Sanchez and Chase Perry, and then a part-time with multiple drivers, including Kyle Bush. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to see what this team can do on trucks and cup series. Now I want to get into the cup series um, viewership. Uh, their viewership this year was down. Their viewership was down uh, this year by 5% from last year. Uh, they averaged a 2.86 million viewers across Fox, FS1, NBC, U.S. Network. You know, down 5% from last year was a 3.3 million viewers. Uh, it was the least watched season on record. The previous low was 3 million in 2021 season. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely this year has not been, a, was not a great year for um, the Cup Series uh, ratings. And viewership was down on most, most races. Um, and you know, a lot of people want to put to Chase Elliott, not racing. Uh, they want to put the format not racing. You know, format's bad. Playoffs are bad. Football. You know, there's all these different things of why the ratings, the ratings are not good. You know, and I know a lot of people are saying that maybe there's more people. There's more people going to the racetrack too. Uh, but to me, I don't think that, that there's the fact that there's more people really may have much of a difference because you know you're not getting, you know, a ton. You're not getting hundreds of thousands of people to go to tracks. You're getting maybe close to fifty, sixty thousand. Now there, there might be overall hundreds of thousands of people at tracks, but you're not. I feel like the people that act track people are that's not they're not making that much of a difference in my opinion on the T V viewers. Uh but yeah, I, I feel like to me, I don't think it's the format. But I do I you know, I didn't want to admit this, but I do think Chase Elliott did have a part uh in what the viewer T V viewership um decline was. You know, I I, I didn't really want to admit it in the beginning because I felt like I was just Chase Elliott, but and I was hearing stuff that fans weren't gonna watch just because of Chase Elliott not being in the race. So I was like, oh, well, okay. But also, I'm not a fan of that because I feel like, like if you're only a fan of a guy because you're only a fan of racing because of that one guy, I feel like you're not really a true racer. But that is what it is. Uh, to me, the most the thing that I think the reason that the TV ratings are most down, and I, 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 I really personally do not think it's the format. People want to think the format is why viewership is down, but viewership has always been down. The playoffs have always been a little bit down. A lot of that could be because of football. To me, I, but I don't personally want them to shorten the schedule to because of football. We should not be playing off of someone else's schedule. We, I like long seasons. I love the season. It gives you stuff to look forward to for the whole flipping year. Um, but I think the biggest issue is not the format. Um, it's not, I, you know, the racing could be a, a factor, but I don't think it's the racing. To me, I think it's the, the, the drivers, the star power. We don't have any outspoken people, maybe besides Denny Hamlet, we don't have, like, people that can draw to it. You know, back then, we had Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., uh, Matt Kenseth, all these, like, outspoken dudes, Mark Martins, these guys that were willing to say what they thought, you know, and I think star power and, and building stars and building popularity towards a driver is very important. It's, to me, the most important thing to help build the sport, and I think that's where we lack. We lack drivers that people like, drivers that are outspoken, uh, drivers that people, fans that can that can connect to, and I think NASCAR needs to find a way to help get their get those those drivers out more and help build the sport. I think ratings all matter, but you, you know you gotta be popular. I think that's what NFL does good because they NFL you know they build stars all every year. And they're able to build that one star. You know they build that star around how good they are on the racetrack. And I think nowadays, to me, you just because you're good on the racetrack does not mean you're gonna build fans. I feel like Hendrick Motorsports thinks if I think Hendrick Motorsports has the most boring personality ever. They're just boring drivers. They they prop their drivers up like that. I feel like they're very they are strict towards how their drivers can act, um, and it's just annoying. I think that's like I I just think that the teams gotta let their drivers be who they want to be, and I think let the drivers market themselves, let the drivers push themselves out there. And also, I think NASCAR should let drivers say what they think. I mean, uh, unless they're wrecking someone, unless they're turning someone head on to a wall. I don't think Nasher Nasher should just let them say what they want. You know, I got Max Verstappen out here bashing the sport of F1, and F1 ain't gonna do anything about it. I haven't heard anything about them doing anything about it. They just gotta let their drivers say what they think. Okay, you just gotta let your drivers be more free. 
Because if you try to restrict your drivers to being like fake or not being them true self, I just think you're hurting your sport. Uh, so I think NASCAR needs to build stars if they want to help improve their TV rating. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what's in this new TV deal, where that all goes, and what you know, TV networks will be covering the sport in the future. Next topic, SVG, a.k.a., well, Shane Van Giesbergen, if I'm saying that right, a.k.a. SVG, three-time supercar champion, won the Chicago street course race. Um, plans. Next year, he signed a big NASCAR track house developmental deal, if I'm saying that right. Uh, he plans to run 20 races next year. And his end goal is by 2025 to go full-time in the Cup Series. Um, you know, and I was, it'll be very, really interesting to see, um, how it all plays out. To me, 20 races, it'll be a mixture between Cup, Xfinity, Craftsman Truck Series, and some late mile races. Uh, his team owner owns, in part owns the Car Store Race, uh, Car Store Series. So, I think that all of that will be a very big help to him, but 20 races, he has 20 races pretty much to prove to Trackhouse that he deserves an opportunity to go full-time. In the Cup Series. And a lot of things I... I guess 20 races is more than what he runs in the Supercar Series. I just think it's going to be very... I want him I want him to, him to succeed. But I think this all comes down to how Daniel Suarez performs. Because Daniel Suarez is on a contract year. And, you know, last this past year, didn't really perform that well. Fan, he was definitely a big, a big letdown, in my opinion, uh, for him to... Um, you know, he didn't get a win. He won in 2022, but didn't really perform. He missed out on the playoffs and just was a letdown year. So this is a big year for Daniel Suarez. If Daniel Suarez does not perform well, he could be out of a ride. And we also, we also have to look like this. We got Zane Smith, who is a sign of track house, but, also, but he's kind of a spire driver. So who knows? I mean, you know, track house knows they have Zane locked up, and they know he, they have Zane as – Zane, I think, will be good. He can stay a spire. I think he can develop. But, I, you know, I think it's all it also going to come down to if we get a charter. Um, a charter, if they can get a new charter with this new deal, we'll have a new charter agreement. So, either the charters will stay or they'll go. Hopefully, maybe NASCAR will add a couple of charters. Um, but, like, it, it'll be very interesting because we'll be having pretty much maybe three guys all going after one ride next year. But I I would still think it's more Dana Suarez versus SVG because I think, I think Jack House is okay with keeping Zane at Spire for a couple of years, let him develop there. Let him keep that ride. Let him learn and grow and experience. I think it all it all comes out of the end of And like I also hope that with this new developmental deal that Trackhouse is going with, with uh, SVG or Shane Van Gisbergen, that they do a full they do full time for one series. Like I feel like the late mile series, the Car Store series, that's like one of the toughest late mile series. They run they run they only run short tracks, but I think it's one of the toughest short track series series in the world. I think it's probably the toughest. I think that he needs to do full time in one series to just you know compete for points. See how he does. Uh, I think with Cup, I think they should focus more on just road courses, and then you know with trucks and Xfinity, I think you get some ovals because ovals to me are going to be his biggest issue because ovals is it's ovals man. Your high speeds, uh, tight turns, fast turns. Ovals is where he's going to have to be. I I don't think Trackhouse is going to go and pull in SVG, you know, just because of money. I think Trackhouse. SVG has money, but I think Trackhouse is going to, you know, give him an opportunity if he performs well. I don't think they're that team because a lot of, a lot of the track, Trackhouse sponsorships are all like a team sponsor, like Freeway and Cobalt. Uh, you know, some of the teams, you know, with Bush Beer going to Ross Chastain and Coca-Cola is like a Dan Suarez sponsor. So, I don't think Trackhouse would go and uh, give SVG a ride just because of money. I think SVG uh, will have to perform well. To get his ride, I, it'll also be you know I really hope SVG can get to the Cup because I think that'll be huge for the Cup Series. It'll be huge for NASCAR to get hopefully get that Australian audience to come into NASCAR and help build their brand because you know NASCAR wants to go full. They want to they want to go international. They want to help build. They want to become like a more of a global sport. You know maybe some fans don't like that, but I think that's going to be awesome. That'll be a way to help build and grow your your your, your sport. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm excited. I really hope. I really want. I hope. I don't know. If, I don't know what all, what races he's doing yet. But I really hope. I would love to see him do like the, the Daytona 500, 
in the 91 car. So I'm excited to see how SVG does. I think uh, in mid in mid uh, September is when he's going to be coming over to America. He's still going to finish out his uh, sports car series season. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, 2024 uh, brings for SVG. And then uh, we're going to be talking about the short track package. So Corey LeJoy on his podcast announced December 5th and 6th at Phoenix Raceway. They'll be testing diff- uh, various underbody and with also a transaxles to try to eliminate shifting. There will be two cars from each manufacturer, one chosen by manufacturer and one chosen by NASCAR. NASCAR. So this big test is going to try to help improve the short track package. So it'll be uh, interesting to see um, what this delivers. Uh, what this results come, hopefully they can get the shifting uh, rid of it. Um, hopefully they can figure out a package to make the racing better. Make the cars harder to drive. Get rid of shifting so you're not allowing that bump and run or, um, you know, you miss a turn, you get downshift type stuff. But I really what I do want to want to lead into this was Kevin Harvard went on the Dale Jr. Download uh, podcast with Dale Jr. And, uh, there's a lot of things he said about the short track package. Uh, uh, one of the one of the quotes he says, re- I think they're really, really going to try to wrangle the short track package back to where it needs to be. We go softer on tires, and the tires go faster and last longer. That confuses everybody. I think everyone is wanting to go back to the drawing board and take a bigger swing. Um, another quote. I just know that there's n- there's enough. I just don't know if there's enough power in the race car. There's way more to it than just saying, "Hey, we need more horsepower." There's a ma- master plan of the car to bring more manufacturers and people in. But if that race car would just blow the back tires off of it, and you had to think about putting that throttle down, it would change the way you race. And right there is the whole big issue with like. NASCAR, he thinks adding horsepower is the way to go. Also, with he thinks that or he understands that NASCAR is trying to get more manufacturers in. That's why they want to lower the horsepower in, and that and I get it. But I don't. I think he thinks the racing would improve if you could, you know, if you had to think about blowing the back tires off, wearing your car out. If you're, you know, if the speeds are fast and the cars are sliding around, they're going to wear. Uh, also, some more comments he said. I think. They're going to take a big swing at the tires. Just the whole package in general, in my opinion, I think will be hard to fix unless they go faster, getting into the corner and slower in the middle of the corner. I wish they would just try it with parts and things. We do we do now. I don't believe that, that much horsepower would be that big of an issue for the engine manufacturers. But if a few engines blew up here and there, who cares? The engine bills don't go down. Engine bills have not gone down since they went to these rules. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff he said there. So really, what he's, he just thinks if you, which I understand, I think if you can make the cars where they let off more, you're not, like at these, like these intermediate tracks, they're, they're going wide open. They're, like, they're figuring out a way to get these cars to go wide open more. Uh, you shouldn't be going wide open. Like, that's not, to me, that doesn't take much skill. It doesn't allow the car. The car doesn't handle as bad if the car is all you gotta do is wide open. So I think they gotta figure out a way to get the cars to be more loose, light off the gas, more throttle control. You have to be more gentle. No, it's not just hang, drop a gear and smash the gas. You have to be playing with the throttle. You know that takes skill to manage your tires with the throttle. Uh, there's a lot of things I think NASCAR can do. And also the engine bills, the engine bills, they, they're not cheaper because really what they do is they're taking these engines and I, I'm not an engine guy, so I could be speaking really and acting really like dumb, like I think I know what I'm talking about. But what he's pretty much saying is the engine bills, the, the engines are still the same, they're just modifying them so they don't, they max out on a certain horsepower. The engines can, I think the engines that are running can produce and not as horsepower. Uh, but I think there's a better way that he thinks, I think he was saying, if we can get up to around 750 horsepower, um, that would be good. Because right now they're running around 675. If they can get a little more horsepower, and that shouldn't be that expensive, 100 horsepower more, I think NASCAR needs needs to try it. 
And who knows? It doesn't look like they need, there are certain parts they have to get that the teams don't have, so they may have to wait until 2025 to try this, but I need, they need to try more horsepower. If this package, if this upcoming test does not work out, then I think they need to figure out, they need to, they need to test more horsepower. Um, so yeah, really interesting thoughts to uh, Kevin Hart when he said there. Um, also, one thing I want to talk about Kevin Hart, you know, good run for his last race. He uh, actually bought Ricky Bobby's North Carolina mansion that he used in Talladega Nights for $6.7 million. So I don't know what Kevin Hart was going to do with that house, but it's pretty cool that he bought the original house. I uh, wonder what he'll do with there, you know. You know, interesting, cool stuff. You know, you just, you know, ah, I retire, I'll just drop $6.7 million on a, a house, you know. It's kind of cool. Cool. And actually, th- this was so big of a deal. Kevin Hart buying this house was such a big of a deal that Sports Center had to post about it. Incredible. ESPN posted about Kevin Hart buying a stinking house. Uh, pretty funny, pretty funny. Um, and then uh, the last topic I wanted to bring up, probably to me the bigger news that was the more interesting news I thought, well, a lot, of, a lot of good news, a lot of interesting news, um, was Colin Racing announced that Josh Williams will drive the No. 11 Xfinity car next season. Alloy Employer Service will be the sponsor. I think Alloy was the sponsor for him when he was at DGM Racing, but this is a big deal. Uh, you know, Josh Williams was most known for parking his car at the start finish line at Atlanta Super Speedway, Motor Speedway. After NASCAR told him to park it because he was uh, delaying the caution, not delaying, but he was extending the caution. Uh, some bear bond kind of fell off his car, so instead of parking it in pits or in the garage, he said, I'll park it at the finish line. So he got worldwide news or lots of attention for that. Um, but this is a big deal because Collins' motto is trophy hunting. You know, when Collins is a new team, it's only a couple years old, their whole motto was pursue. Trophies. They were going to go after trophies. They went and got, they went and signed. I think one of the first drivers they signed was A. Jominator, a world class road course driver and a guy that could go out there and win in any car and any road course on any track. And and that was a big deal for him because that helped them. They got wins. They won road course races because of him, because of A. Jominator. So now it seems like calling racing is taking a different approach. They're going to help, they're going to try and develop. Josh Williams to be a caliber, a guy that can go out there and win champions. I think Colin Racing on their cup side, they're not they're not that good. They they have a lot of work to do on the cup side, but on the three series side, they're they're race winning cars every week. I feel like they're championship level cars. Now they may be a, a little bit behind when it comes to that the championship aspect, but they're good. Um, you know, Josh Williams overall career stats in the cup series is uh, ten top tens, zero top fives, zero poles. Oh, it's only then nine laps. Average finish of 22.7. So, I guess he's not had great stats. But I think they see a potential in him. And, you know, and look, it could also be because of money. We all know this sport has a, has a lot to do with money. Um, so, it could be that he was bringing in a lot of funding. And Colin needs funding. And they see that this guy has a lot. And they see potential. And, look, Josh Williams' personality uh, he has a great personality. If he can be successful and win, that's going to be big for the sport because he's a funny dude. He literally, after parking it in the start finish of Atlanta, he got sent to the Nassau Hall and had a big old shebang there. Well, then he went on on his own website and start and s- sold shirts and said, park it. And, he, and those shirts he couldn't have bought on his website. So he took that, what well, he did, and he tried and made money, and made money from it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what calling what Josh Williams can do in this car. This is going to be Josh Williams' probably best opportunity he'll ever maybe get. And maybe if he performs really good in calling, he can move up. But it'll be also really interesting. We also we don't know what what um, calling will do with AJ Allmendinger. And there's talks that he may go back to X, down to Xfinity, or he'll stay with Cub. Uh, there's talks that Ty Dillon could be going to replace the 16 car, and AJ will come down to Xfinity. So. There's still a lot of news to come out with calling to see where what direction they're going to take this. Uh, but uh, to me, this shows that calling racing is willing to maybe forfeit trophy hunting or trophy, you know, tr- trophy catching to go and help develop and build on a guy. So to me, that's that's good for Josh Williams. A big deal for him. Excited for him. I like Josh Williams. I think he he's he has personality. He he could be a star in the sport. Um, but yeah, well, that's, I think that's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, really, really excited to continue to build, 
and improve on um, just the podcasting in general. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what all news comes out. This will, guess what? This will be very random. Um, I, I really it'll all depend on how much news comes out around the world, around the series. Uh, if I, I plan, to, I may not make an episode until the end of after Thanksgiving or into December. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys all have a, a great Thanksgiving. And uh, if you ain't first, you're last. See you, y'all.